Normally in Articulate Storyline, when you have a freeform drag and drop question like what we see here, if the learner doesn't drag anything around and they hit the submit button anyway, they're going to get this invalid answer pop up that says they have to complete the question before they go on. And you can customize the text labels if you want this to say something different. You can also change your player colors if you want this um, box to be a different color or the button to be a different color. But a question came up whether it's possible to completely not use this pop-up and to use your own custom slide layer instead, like if you want to create a completely different visual design. And it is possible to do that. So let me just answer this question and we'll go on to the next one, which is actually a duplicate because this one does have a custom layer that has a message on it for the invalid answer. So on this one, we'll hit the submit button and you can see that it's gonna behave very differently. It looks very different than the standard pop-up that we saw. And here, if the learner clicks okay, they're taken back to the question, they can answer it and then hit submit to get their feedback. So let's see how you can do this in Storyline. What I did first is I created a, um, a separate layer. So you can just click on the new layer button here to create your own layer on the question and this is where I added my own design for you know the invalid answer so this is just a plain old rectangle that I drew on the slide and made it partially transparent here's a text box and here's a button and on the button I added a trigger to hide the layer when the user clicks that way they can get back to the base layer so they can answer the question since they didn't answer it the first time through the other thing I did is I created a new state for each of my draggable items. So if we select this first star here and look down in the states panel, you can see I've got this state called dropped. And you can create your own states by just clicking the edit state button and then hit new state. And when this window pops up, you can type a name for the state that you want to create. So I called mine dropped and once I typed that in and then hit add, it just gets added down here to my list of states. And initially it's going to look just like your normal state. And I didn't change that. I left it just like that because I didn't really need the appearance to change. But we're going to use this state to monitor whether the learner has dropped the item someplace on the slide. And then I hit done editing states. Now once you do that on the first item, if you select that item and then double click on the format painter, anything else you click from here is going to inherit that same state. So like if I click this star, you can see that now I have this dropped state on that item as well. And we'll click, turn the format painter off here. Okay, the other thing that you'll want to do is over in the slide triggers, we need to tell Storyline when to change the state of each of these objects. So here's one for the first star. I'll just go ahead and open this up so you can see what I did. The trigger wizard is really cool because it just lets you tell Storyline what you want to have happen and when. So I said to change the state of star one to dropped when the object star one is dropped on either of these two drop targets, the ones with the dotted lines. That would be star four or star two. And that's really all there is to it. Once you create that first trigger, you can copy and paste it, and then it'll, you know, you can create another trigger here and just make sure that everything still works. You know, and for the new trigger, you'll want to go through and um, check that everything looks the way you need it to. And in this case, it would be change the state of star three to dropped when the object star three is dropped on either star two or star four, and then click OK. So that part's done. The other thing that you'll want to do is customize the triggers on the submit button. So normally there's one trigger on the submit button, and we're going to modify that, which I've already done here. So what I've said here is I do want to submit the drag and drop interaction when the user clicks the submit button, but I added a couple conditions and you can do that by clicking on this green arrow or this green plus sign. So I said only submit the interaction if star one is in its drop state and star three is in its drop state. So both of these have to be true in order to submit the interaction. Then I added another trigger. Let's open this one up. And this is where that custom layer comes in. So here I'm saying show the layer that we created with the invalid answer when the user clicks the submit button. And this time the conditions are a little bit different. This time I said if star one is not dropped or star three is not dropped. And the or is important here because anytime you add conditions to a trigger like this, you'll have an opportunity to say whether it's an and or an or. And so this time I wanted it to be either or if they're either one is not dropped, and that's how I want it to behave. So now if we preview this, we'll see that if we submit without giving an answer, we get the invalid answer.